as we all know, uh, Snow White is a film that Disney are making, and it hasn't exactly been a success story. Um, that's putting it mildly. Mostly due to Rachel Whatever Ziegler. do you mean? I know. Um, <laughs> yeah, mostly due to Rachel Ziegler and her interesting comments that she's made in various interviews over the past several months. And wow, like I don't think I've ever seen such a, a thermonuclear bad reaction to this, um, to the point where Disney have pulled the movie and uh, delayed it by an entire year while they desperately do reshoots. Um, and wow, I think we were all impressed by those CGI dwarves that we saw. They were very convincing, definitely weren't added in um, as a desperate measure. Um, but anyway, um, she recently did an interview for Variety, and it was one of those actor-on-actor -actor interviews with Halle Bailey. And they talked a little bit about uh, their experiences playing Disney princesses and... Rachel shared her thoughts once again on Snow White. And I'm going to give you a video that will give you a little comparison. And I'm sorry to have to subject you to some of Rachel Zegler's greatest hits. Um, but you can see a little bit of it. And then you can see what she's like now in her most recent interview. And see if there's a, a difference in tone, shall we? I mean, you know, the, the original cartoon came out in 1937, and very evidently so. <laughs> um, there is a big focus on her love story. Um, with a guy who literally stalks her. <laughs> yeah. Weird, weird. I just mean that it's no longer 1937, and we absolutely wrote a Snow White that she's is not going to be yeah. saved by the prince. She's not going to be saved by the prince, and she's not going to be dreaming about true love. All of Andrew's scenes could get cut. Who knows? It's Hollywood, baby. But <laughs> the cartoon was made 85 years ago, and therefore it's extremely dated when it comes to the ideas of women being in roles of power several months later the cartoon is so beloved it's like a monumental moment in film history yeah it's like the first feature length <laughs> cartoon <laughs> movie to the point where it, it won honorary oscars and yeah all of these amazing things that that happened for that film are the reason that you and i really get to sit here today because yes. it made hey she just what can't could possibly say have happened I know. <laughs> she just can't say enough good things about Snow White now. Like, hmm. I, if I was a cynical man, I'd say that someone from the Disney PR team has been coaching her for the past few weeks. I should have been re-educated. Re-education If you pause it very carefully and enhance, you can actually see the Disney executive holding a gun to her head just slightly <laughs> off screen, just slightly out of shot. Um, they should have put above the notes, though, please read in your own voice. Like, it's like she's actually reading from the notes that they gave her and didn't sort of try and work it in naturally. It was the first film for Academy Award for animation. Like, it's all just she's trying to remember she's the facts. Like got. peeking down at her notes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was released in uh, 1937. Is that right? A yeah, great sure. year oh, for right. movie making for Disney. We would not be here if it weren't for Disney. I am most grateful to Disney. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have a great deal of respect for this movie and everything that it represents. Thank you. Um, yeah. yeah, it was it was a funny little bit of uh, PR spin, I guess. Um, and I don't think it convinced too many people because I said this in the, the video that I made just recently. Um, you know how you have that concept of guilt by association? I think what they are trying for here is uh, virtue by association. So they paired her up with Halle Bailey, uh, who I, on the surface seems to be in a similar position to Rachel Zegler, a, a woman of um, diverse background um, who was cast into a role um, that was played, you know, it was a white character originally, um, and took a bit of heat for it. Um, the difference being, though, Halle Bailey took a little bit of heat initially, but she didn't respond to it, and she just kind of got on with the job of being Ariel. And nobody really had a problem with her as a person. They had a problem with her casting, and eventually that just kind of subsided, and uh, the movie came out. Now, that's one way of doing it. Then there's the Rachel Zegler way, where... Yeah, again, people had issues with her casting because, again, Snow White was a, a white character initially and they race swapped her. Um, but the real backlash came once all those interviews came to light and people got to see how disrespectful she was to the original movie, how she even laughed at one of her co-stars potentially getting written out of the film altogether, like that was funny, um, and just came across as generally a pretty unpleasant person. And 
again, I don't want to like attribute motive here because who knows? Like maybe maybe she was told to say all this stuff. But either way, it presents an image of a person who's very entitled, very arrogant, very like high on on their the smell of their own farts, uh, and just feels like they can they can throw out whatever they want to say. Um, and it didn't go down very well. And um, that's clearly been a, a real shift since then. <laughs> yeah, and you know the whole interview is such it's just dripping in insincerity and that's i i had to do a little ca palate cleanser just after watching this interview just to kind of get a sense of of reality i watched instead um uh the um sit down actors on actors sit down with uh, margot robbie and um why am i spacing oppenheimer's name i'm so sorry i'm spacing on his on the murphy name. there you go um and there, the two of them are speaking very sincerely to each other, asking each other questions about methods around acting, producing, direction, all of this stuff. And here you have these two, you know, 20 something, very, they're very young actresses. And every single part of that interview is just intensely propping each other up. Oh, you dealt with that so beautifully. That was so graceful. You just had my heart and it was incredible to see. Did you see that? And and were you just in tears? It was just, it's so much <laughs> yeah. artifice just infused into the conversation. And, you know, you can see where Halle, Halle Bailey is a little different. She's she was attributing a lot of her success to outside forces. She was attributing it. She was, she was showing a lot of genuine gratitude. She was even, you know, thanking God and, and her family's role in helping her through all this. And with um, Rachel Zegler, she, you know, she says at one point that, you know, women get so criticized. I think either Hallie said that or she said that, that women get so hugely criticized, which, you know, to bring our gender into everything is, is just so frustrating is that something bad happens to you and you say, oh, it's well, it's because I'm a woman. And I, I've always detested that kind of reasoning behind anything, but that's quite common these days. But then she says, you know, at the end of the day, people are going to say what they're going to say. They're going to be critical. They're going to be uh, negative. Um, and here I am promoting a movie. And then Halle Berry goes, you know, she does like a little snap thing to, to again, to prop her up further. And so at the end of the day, even on this, what you could call an apology tour, her end answer out of this is that you're a hater. I'm, look at me, I'm promoting a movie, you know? And for that, she, and that's that moment that the mask really slips where she shows how she really feels about this. But leading up to it, um, she has the same face. You can see the same face, which is, you know, eyebrows up. Some, it's like her eyes are almost concerned and tearful, and she looks vulnerable for the whole thing. She has that same approach of just vulnerability. And then for that one second, you see how she really thinks about it, which is, hey, I'm a movie star. Yeah. yeah. What I think as She's well, been... like, it, it's, it's not like, um, yeah, you were just promoting a movie and then suddenly you're getting all this unwarranted um, criticism. It's like you were promoting it uh, as an asshole and you came across as an asshole. And that's why people have a problem with you. And it's it's a this, um, this washing your hands of all responsibility. And it kind of goes back to what I said before of we're going to create this false equivalency by putting Rachel Zegler next to um, Halle Bailey um, and and try to pretend that they're the same. They were criticized for the exact same reasons purely because they're diverse actresses playing um, white characters. Like, uh, And that's the only reason. And it's not. Rachel Zegler was criticized because she came across really badly on a personal level. Halle Bailey was criticized for her casting, but not as a person. And yeah. that is very, very different. But like I say, they're trying to create this... Uh, this um, fallacy of like virtue by association. Like, well, if we just put them together, people like Halle Bailey, they'll probably also end up liking Rachel Zegger because they're just going to see them as the same person or the same, uh, a person in the same situation. And same um, societal fight, too, right? It's, it's it, exactly. Yeah. Yep. And it, it's just like, it would have been, it would have been so much more effective if she had just made a video in her fucking living room and said, hey, you know what? I, I was caught on the red carpet and I got a little bit too caught up in the whole enthusiasm of the moment. And I said some really dumb stuff and I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. Uh, and this, you know, I just want to now focus on doing the best job I can. 
you yeah. have to like acknowledge that you screwed up. And if you do that and you apologize for it, 95% of people are, are going to accept that because it's really it hard really to... Way. Yeah, it's it well, it's hard to stay mad at someone who's genuinely sorry and like you know acknowledges that they did something wrong and they want to do better. Okay, you know it's a pretty hard-hearted person who's going to still be mad at them and still hate them. Um, but instead of that, it's like no, we're just going to subtly change direction here and deflect the blame onto other people and pretend mm -hmm. that I did nothing wrong. And I just yeah. thought, you missed an opportunity there. You really did. When there's an apology, like you know, if you're um, not moving forward, you're participating in cancel culture. But when it comes to Rachel Zegler, like even earlier this year, she was complaining about, um, well, not complaining, but she was poo-pooing the Shazam 2 movie. And it wasn't even like a long length of time between the release of the movie when she was uh, basically shitting on it and talking about how she you know, only took it for the money. Um, and that was like back in like March when that movie came out. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's, that's not the first time you've ever heard an actor say they took a movie for money or anything, but, um, this is like a, pa <laughs> this is a pattern and, uh, she did it like, you know, like the week or two to distance herself from the movie once it came out because it bombed. Um, so yeah, this is like nothing new for Zegler and all at the same time, like if someone's apologetic too, if they're work is really great like if you're just making great product if you're making a great movie if you're doing a great job um that also shuts a lot of people up um but like nothing she's done this year has actually been like really standouty anyway so it's um you know an entitlement coming from someone who's not doing anything particular to earn it either well i think a lot of people have been pointing to like uh the new hunger games movie that she's in and saying ha see that's a success, and nobody's and talking who's about made that. Them money. Yeah, well, it, and it's like uh, in your face, haters, and it's like, wait a minute, this movie cost a hundred million to make. Uh, it's another fifty, sixty million at least for marketing. Uh, when you factor in the distribution costs, like the fifty percent that the distributors take, this is going to have to make at least three hundred million, at least three hundred million just to break even, and it's currently sitting at two hundred and sixty million. Uh, according to Box Office Mojo, um, and it's been out for a month already. This movie is not right. going to break even. It, it's right. not going to make is money. That it's like ranking number one, but uh, or it had, but like, what's the point of being number one anyway if you're only making, you know, whatever, like twenty nine, fourteen million dollars? If if you're number uh, one and your competition is like the the Marvels, <laughs> or, or, right? That's not <laughs> that impressive. You know, it's like you're the smartest kid on the short bus. So like, okay, great. Well, <laughs> Dude, isn't it crazy yeah. if uh, Dune come out on time that the, the Marvels would have made even mm. less money in that time? Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. Yeah. it wouldn't even oh. have gotten those IMAX screens. Nope. Towards the end, did we not do a check and it was like averaging about like $65 per theater or something? Oh, <laughs> absolutely. God. Just absolutely absurd. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why it's such a great film. It's so good. 